Lisa. Yes, baby girl. When I grow up, I want to be a woman to society. And so shall you be. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Minute to Society. This is Lisa Landry. I'm so excited to speak with today's guest. She's one of my favorites. She was here before. Welcome back to the podcast, Dr. Heidi Ham. Hi, Heidi. Hello, Lisa. So what's been going on at Spectrum Fusion? Last time we spoke too, you had mentioned to me that the CDC had a different awareness of what was happening as far as statistics of autism in humans. And they have reevaluated their their stats and now they're saying one in 39 it's different in different countries actually south korea even has i think it's one in 32 every country has a different number but it definitely is something that we have to pay attention to because this is why we started spectrum fusion in the first place in the reactor room because we are a social impact initiative and so we are helping these children who are reaching adulthood and they really don't have anywhere to turn. And so that's why we started this and why we really believe in our mission and our vision. And you help place autistic adults with jobs that are more like careers instead of places that they go to, like working at Goodwill, for instance, or stacking items in a warehouse. I think I mentioned last time that there is a man on the autism spectrum, and he's been shelving books at a library for eight years. And he has been looking and looking and looking for another position, going to all the different organizations, trying to seek assistance. And he was really getting to the point where he was falling into despair. And he told me, you know, I wake up every morning and I wonder what is the poison I'm going to have to drink today because I don't have any options. But anyway, he is going to start with us here at Spectrum Fusion on Monday. We hired him, and then we will bring him into the React Room program, and we're going to help him find new opportunities. What kind of opportunities is he looking for? Well, he actually even has a degree in database management. So here he was working in a library, and he wanted other opportunities. And so I asked him if he would just create a database and enter all of the books that I had so I could keep track of everything. And <laughs> he did that. He's helping us with the social enterprise. We have an oculoplastic surgeon who has commissioned us to make eye compresses for his surgical patients who require heat compresses after their surgical procedures. Mm -hmm. And so we are now making those eye compresses. He's ordering all the supplies and the materials for that. And so that is taking off. But he is looking for opportunities really in anything related to database management. He has knowledge in QuickBooks. He wants to archive documents. So I think anything along those lines. And he lives in Houston. And he's with you right now? Well, I have Will here, yeah. and Will, so I think I may have shared his story with you. He has a degree in psychology. He graduated in a talented and gifted, gifted program, K-12. through He was working at a dead-end job at a comic book store, but really everybody thought that, you know, as long as he had a job that, you know, that was fine, but, you know, he, he ticked that box and let's all move on, but he really wanted to be a writer. So we brought him into the reactor room program, and on his panel, the, we have activators. So our reactor room, as you know, I think I shared with you, but you know, we, we learn about somebody's skills, talents, strengths, ideas, and passions, and then we create an event just for them where we bring in entrepreneurs, business leaders, community connectors, and individuals knowledgeable about their area of interest. And so we call those activators. And so on his panel, we had an editor, and we had other entrepreneurs, and so they brought connections, and then he published his first article, and then he was writing our blog, and he, he wrote a blog for Higher Autism, mm -hmm. and then now he has a job as a writer with a company called SEO411, and I can let him share more about that, but he is definitely on his way to being a writer, as, you know, that was his dream. That's fantastic, Heidi. Yeah, that is it's really exciting for us. It's a very exciting outcome. I would love to hear more from him since he's right there. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. Hey, Will. 
Hello. <laughs> Congratulations on your new successes. Oh, well, thank you very much. What comes next? Well, I'm going to be working with Spectrum Fusion some more on top of working with SEO 411. They've got me writing some advertisement materials. They've got me working on sprucing up their brochure and possibly writing uh, and editing a couple more advertisement materials like white papers and things like that. So that's on the horizon. And um, as, as long as I continue working with um, SEO 411 and keep working with Spectrum Fusion, more opportunities just keep cropping up. Is it better than working just stacking stuff at the comic book place? Uh, yeah. The, the, the comic book store was a difficult place for me to work. I'm, I'm not very, you know, retail inclined. And my boss was always very frustrated with me simply because I was never doing things quite his way. And uh, it, it started to get really tense after a while. So it, it came to the point where I simply just had to leave before things boiled over one way or another. I think a lot of us have had job situations such as that. <laughs> I'm glad you yeah, got out. <laughs> it's not a fun situation to be in. Not at all. What is your favorite part about working with um, the reactor room? Simply how approachable everyone is and simply how people listen to you, which when I was working in the comic book store, it felt like any time I tried to say something, I would either be ignored or I would be shot down. And it's just such a friendly and approachable environment. And you feel free to work in the way that you're comfortable working. And everyone encourages you to work in the way you're comfortable working rather than conforming to some specific process that you might not be able to adapt to. It's a very comfortable and sometimes even relaxing place to work. And would you recommend Spectrum Fusion in the reactor room situation for other people who've been diagnosed as autistic adults? I would absolutely recommend the process. I would absolutely recommend the reactor room. It's just such a unique experience, especially compared to other programs that simply stick you at Goodwill or Target and say, you're good, we don't need to help you anymore. It's such a personal experience. It's such a personalized experience, and it really helps get to the core of who you are and what you require. And what does your family think about the reactor room and your progress there? My family is ecstatic. They're, they, for so long, I was just stuck in a rut that that now that things finally seem to be in motion, they're just absolutely ecstatic. Well, I'm ecstatic for you, and I can't wait to read some of your writing. Oh, well, thank you very much. My writing has been featured in Katie Christian Magazine. I forget, that was it like the December issue of 20? I can't remember now. <laughs> um, it's on the website, and it's also been featured on Higher Autism. So... You, you can find some of my work there, and of course, you can also find it on the Spectrum Fusion website. Well, thank you, Will. I look forward to your progress. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. Oh, and I forgot to tell you some other great news. It looks like we are now putting together a program. We are really pleased to share that we have the opportunity to develop a program um, for neurodiversity in the workplace. And we are writing a pilot program and bringing in adults on the spectrum so that they can bring their skills and talents into large corporations. And so this is something that we're very excited about because, as we know, if we look at all the individuals who have differences in their um, cognitive processing or what can call, sometimes we call them neurodivergence, or this is neurodiversity, if we're looking at no brain is the same. If we think about all the individuals who have ADD, dyslexia, autism, any other learning differences, that could really amount to 1.2 billion people across the world. And so if we're not really helping these individuals and bring their talents into the workplace, you know, not only are we doing a service to those families, but also we're losing all of that benefit that we can bring to our companies and have 
new and exciting outcomes. So you're saying 1.2 billion human beings on the planet would fall into some sort of classification of yeah Neurodivergence. yeah okay that, basically yeah. having mm-hmm. a difference in cognitive style cognitive processing than a neurotypical and so really at that point you know we have to consider that we're missing out on you know all of these beautiful minds and that is a shame. It is a shame. And then you think about people feeling isolated or devalued at these positions because they don't, quote unquote, think like everybody else. And, you know, it's really important because a lot of times if people are hesitant to share that they maybe they feel uncomfortable in a certain environment or they feel that they're not accepted and that they don't belong, that really affects their performance. And sometimes these individuals, when they do leave, they have trauma or they have PTSD and they don't want to try again. And so there was a program, a research program at Google where they tried to find the perfect team. And so what they did is, you know, they have access to all the data. They were looking at the different teams and they were trying to find why some teams flourished and other teams faltered. And so, you know, they looked at their education or tried to understand if they had similar interests or did they socialize outside of the workforce, the workplace? What was it that made these teams so different to one another? And so they continued to evaluate this and you know, a year went by and they still couldn't figure out exactly what it could be. They thought it could be some sort of an unwritten rule, but still they could not understand, you know, really what that entailed. And so then they turned to Carnegie Mellon and other research, and at the end of the day, what they found out is the key to the perfect team or a successful team is the feeling of emotional safety, psychological safety. And that is something that cannot be, I guess, what I would say, you cannot fake that. And so sometimes it's, it's a bit to say, oh, we do value you, but if you share something personal and that comes back to haunt you or it's used against you in some way as an evaluation, that is not a safe environment. And so individuals on the spectrum, they, of course, need to have a very safe space. And so this is something that we are really passionate about because they, that authenticity needs to be there. And, and if they do share and they, once they do feel that they can be themselves and bring their whole selves to work, you will find a very loyal employee. We are very excited about partnering with, with corporations to bring neurodiversity into the workplace and to provide a pilot program and to provide the framework to create success for both the adults on the spectrum and success in terms of the employer really gaining all of the benefits of having somebody on their team who is neurodiverse. I think you're amazing, Dr. Heidi Ham, and I thank you so very much for speaking with me and my listeners. Well, I'm really excited, and thank you so much, Lisa, for continuing to follow our journey and to be such a great supporter of special fusion and all of our reactors, and so we really value that, and we value you, and we are grateful for this opportunity. I'm thankful for what you're doing, sis, and I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Heidi Ham. Thanks for all the research you're doing. Thanks for being such a pioneer. And thanks, Will. Congratulations. And y'all, thanks for listening. Please join me at lisalandry.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You will know when each new podcast drops. Every woman is Wednesday. Shout out, Ari Bear. I know you're a good researcher, too. 